Tomorrow night you're going to get a great place. What? The ambulance is going to pick you up here and they're going to take you right up the MS. They're going to take you there and we've got the special seating. So you and your mom and your dad. Get the hell out of here. No, you're lying. No, you're going. <laughs> She's going. Get out of here. Yes, you're going. Yeah. I'm going to see Garth Brooks. You're going to see Garth Brooks. You don't have to stay here. Tomorrow night? No. I don't believe this. You'll have to tell me if you had fun after you get. Cool. Tell them where you're from. We're from Jamie's family. What? So I'm really going to see Garth Brooks. Here we go. Yep. And you deserve to go. And they're going to make sure nobody bumps you. Really? 10.30 at night, so though. <laughs> <laughs> You're even hey, getting that. I got that lots of uh, pictures. You got to get a nap. You got to get a nap. A lot of rest during the daytime. That means no one's coming to see me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a problem. I think we can not uh, take care of that. We'll put up the do, do not, not disturb, disturb single. So White Oak yeah. offered to take you. Yeah, White Oak offered their services. Yeah, Jack called me back in five minutes. Okay. The, this, the medic and the, the, the crew. <laughs> We got the crew tickets to stay at the show so they can see the show too. Yeah. Yeah. So. so everybody will go and have fun in your gun with you. It's pretty cool. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. You get a great thing for that 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 whole block. So I think you deserve whatever you want. That was really all I wanted to do. <laughs> So, well, you will do that. Thank you. So we'll be here. They're coming here tomorrow night at 9. Okay. So we're just going to stop by. We're not going. We're just going to stop by. You got your hair done, and now you got that hat on? Of course. I always put my helmet on when I'm in the safety guard. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. I mean, I fell off a ladder. i got to be safe sometime. Right. Not, it's after the fact you're being safe. Well, I was safe then because accidents happen. Do you look nice to oh, oh, Dude, the first thing I did was start crying. Really? Why, why is that? Why is that? Well, like the first thing I said when uh, when this happened was, "Crap, we got Garth Brooks tickets, and I can't go." I was super high on painkillers, but I was pretty mad. So that was pretty much the first thing you were thinking about. I'd, I've been asking him every day, like if I could go see him. Like I, I didn't even care. I'd walk yeah. there. And, and and of course, obviously, you're saying no. Why? Well, because I'm I can't move. And I'd have to go by an ambulance, and if someone hit me, it'd be pretty ugly. So, okay. so, so now that you can go, with what was going through your mind? And someone told you that. A thousand things at once. <laughs> well, I'm kind of mad. I can't wear my my jeans and my cowboy belt and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But at least I get to wear my cowboy. Belt. So, uh, so you're a big Garth Brooks fan? Oh yeah. Grew uh, up with it. Oh yeah. What, what's your uh, you have a favorite song? Or? Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge is a good one. So, um, so when when you heard he's coming, getting back on tour, coming through town, what'd you do? Well, I spent three hours at work staring at Ticketmaster, waiting for them to open it, and then uh -huh. I had end up having to do work, and I missed it. And I texted my mom like right away and told her, and I know we got tickets, and then this happened. So, pretty excited now. Huh? Oh yeah, like, really excited. Mm -hmm. So, um, how, how's your recovery going? How, how are you doing? Um, pretty good. I moved out of bed a couple of times today in the past couple of days. Um, it, uh, the bruising's really starting to show now and uh, just really how bad it really is. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm, I'm pushing through it and so, I actually yelled at my, ther my physical therapist for helping me. I wanted to do it all on my own. Okay. You're ready to get, the, yeah. get, get ahead of the game, I <laughs> yeah, guess, right? Yeah, I hate sitting there. It's uh -huh. I'm missing out at the fire station and right. So um, that if you want to talk about that that night, what happened that night? Can you tell me a little bit about what what happened? I mean, I don't really remember why I fell or what happened, but I just remember climbing up the ladder. I had the hose in my hand and um, I had my mask on. Obviously, I was breathing air, mm -hmm. and um, I originally went in the window and climbed inside, but they told me to come out because they thought the roof was going to collapse. Mm -hmm. So as I was backing out. Something happened. I misplaced my foot. I slipped on the ice. I mean, there was literally ice ice sticks like this big on the ladder, mm -hmm. 
and um, I mean something went and the hose fell out. I actually went to grab the hose and I think the hose ripped me out as I grabbed it and then I just spun around and went and I didn't bounce. <laughs> it sounds painful. So, yeah. so um, were you, you, you remained conscious during this, or yeah, you yeah, blacked out, or um, no? I remember hitting the ground, um, screaming, trying to rip my mask off, my helmet. Um, I, I, I landed on my radio when I fell, and I, it was keyed up, and um, I think they could just hear me screaming over it, and okay. it, it, it was it was pretty rough for everyone else. So what, what do you think, I mean, a lot of people have heard your story so far, and uh, you're getting a lot of love out there, what do you, I mean, what, how does it make you feel? <laughs> Showing you a lot of respect. I just want everyone to know that I'm not a hero. Why is that? I got hurt doing my job. I mean, I'm 19, and I'm already, I made lieutenant, mm -hmm. and I really worked for it. So when you get get recovered here, are you ready to go back at it? I do, tomorrow. Actually, I got a funny story about that. <laughs> the first night when I was in Mercy, um, we had another, we got another house fire on 10th Avenue. And we get the pages on our phone and everything, and right. my phone went off. And, and you're, you're laying in the bed. Oh, yeah. And my roommate is actually a retired firefighter from Wilkinsburg. So he heard me screaming, and he said, well, what's wrong? What's wrong? I said, dude, I'm missing a house fire. And he said, well, do you have a way to listen to it? And I said, well, yeah, let me let me pull up my uh, scanner. And we sat there all night and listened to it. And we went back and <laughs> forth with war stories and stuff. And it was pretty cool. Oh, that's the first one right there? I have a metal rod from my hip to my knee. Uh, this whole top part of my knee is a metal plate. And I have three screws going this way and three going this way. And it's holding it all together. And then this knee, I cracked my kneecap right down the middle. And uh, as soon as this heals, I'll be, I'll be moving. And after that, it won't be long before I'm putting my fire gear back on. Now, when you, did you look kind of like laying like this when, you, when your knees first? I felt like a cat, or, like, or you felt like you, on all fours, uh -huh. and then it was kind of like a chain reaction. Like this knee hit first, which obviously was the worst, and then this knee hit, and then I hit this elbow, and then I landed on like my forearm, kind of mm -hmm. like I caught myself, and I rolled and I hit my helmet off the ground, but I didn't hit my head. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, all I remember is I, I tried ripping my helmet off, my mask. I was still breathing air, and it was like I couldn't get a breath, and I was screaming so much. And after that, every, there, there had to be at least 50 firefighters there like that when I hit the ground. And it, it was literally minutes before I was in the ambulance and headed to Mercy. Um, we have worked with the Cancer Center over in Jefferson. And somebody called Jamie from there, and it was one of their, the kid's mom who worked there, who got hurt. And, of course, we were going to help him. So I called. All they wanted was to be able to take him to Garth Brooks. So they already had the tickets, but we had to get them changed, and I needed to get him a ride to the hospital in an ambulance. So we ended up calling White Oak EMS. I called Jack Petro. He called me back within minutes, and we had that done. And then today I called the consul, and we arranged everything. And he's going tomorrow night for the 11:30 concert. And talk about this kid. He's amazing. I'm wearing his helmet. He wanted me to wear his helmet. He's an amazing <laughs> kid. Um, such a happy, and to be so young, mm -hmm. to want to give back. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's funny. I met his mom through the cancer center, and we help one of their patients, and it seems to be like a full circle. Everybody gives back and everybody helps one another, and it's very nice. And when you look at their son, he's the same way. He got hurt, and he doesn't regret it, and he would do it again because he was helping somebody. And he's so excited. You could tell the kid lives for the fire hall, and we're just glad to help him.
Hi. And this might okay, be, how's it been? Might need some help. You need help? No. Nope. I'm, okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay. Hey, someone shout out. Okay. Okay. You guys still not talking? Yeah. Can you just leave me there? Huh? Can you get me in their tour bus? We'll sneak me in there. Don't. Okay. These guys are awesome. That chair is. <laughs> Take one more. Put that together. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, do you like the survive bar? Huh? Oh, she does. What are we doing? Smile. Garth Brooks and Trishita.